Many of the issues which brought people to the streets back then are still causing problems today. Anger has risen over new austerity measures after a year of rising prices. The government has promised more assistance for poor families, but many say it's just not enough. Hashem Ahalbara sent this update from the Tunisian capital, Tunis. For many Tunisians, this is a moment of national pride. Parents, along with their children, converge here on the Habib Bourguiba Square, which was the focal point of the 2011 revolution, to commemorate the event and to honor those who were killed in 2011 to defend democracy and put an end to the autocratic rule of the former president Zain al Abidin bin Ali. But I have to say that there's also this feeling of frustration over the track record of the government and this feeling among people that this worried about their future because of the instability that, is, that still continues and because also of the austerity measures that, that were implemented by the government a few days ago. For the Tunisians, the biggest problem uh, is not the budget deficit, it is uh, the need to tackle corruption and embezzlement of public fund, the government, uh, funds. The government, on the other hand, says the only way to cut or reduce the budget deficit is to increase taxes and they need to do it to maintain the economy, the balance of the budget, to be able to uh, finance social development programs in the near future. So this remains a very delicate moment for the Tunisian people and for the government. On one hand, they need to increase taxes to get more revenues, but at the same time they cannot further afford to upset the people because if they go to the streets, that's where we might see more instability. Well, back in 2011, 26-year-old fruit vendor Mohamed Bouazizi set himself alight in protest at police harassment, sparking an uprising that forced out longtime Tunisian president Zine al Abidin Ben Ali. Osama bin Javed looks back at the revolution that toppled a dictator and the uncertainty that followed. This was the Tunisian capital seven years ago when protesters made history. With simple demands and joblessness and improved prospects for young people, they sparked a regional Arab Spring uprising. Their perseverance ended the rule of President Zain al Abidin bin Ali, who had been accused of corruption and rights abuse, but also began an era of political uncertainty. I am not prepared to be the person who takes decisions which result in the loss of life. And the conservative Islamic party banned by Ben Ali was on its way to win elections. We have seen the popularity that Anada has around the country. And after a turbulent nine months, they ushered in a democratically elected government in October 2011. There were more demonstrations a year later despite a ban on protests. Another challenge for Tunisia is security and law and order, especially on its borders with Algeria and Libya. Three years after the revolution, demonstrators took to the streets against economic hardship. A new technocrat government was still failing to improve living conditions in 2014. But Tunisians did get a new constitution, hailed as an important step towards full democracy. The 2014 elections brought power to the secular Nida Tunis party, which later formed a coalition government with the conservative in Nahda party. But the security situation failed to improve. 22 people, including 21 foreign tourists, were killed when gunmen opened fire at a museum in the capital, Tunis. In June, 39 people, nearly all of them foreign tourists, were killed in a gun attack on a five-star hotel in Sousse. Tunisia's tourism industry has struggled to recover since then. People were out on the streets once again. Now they didn't feel safe and also had no jobs. In 2016, Tunisia built a 200-kilometer barrier along its border with Libya to try and keep out fighters and refugees. But in March, 55 people were killed when dozens of fighters stormed through the town of Bin Gardan, near the Libyan border, attacking army and police posts. Last May, President Beji Saeed the Sipsi ordered the army to protect oil facilities in the south after protests planned to disrupt production. Tunisia has made major advancements in achieving democracy and improving its institutions. But on the streets, the economic hardships which sparked the protests seven years ago still continue. Osama bin Javed, Al Jazeera.